Welcome to this week's Archaeological News. I've got five stories for you this week and it was hard to choose which one I wanted to headline with. I decided that my favourite piece of news to come out of the world of archaeology in recent days was the discovery of 24 remarkably well-preserved bronze statues from an ancient Etruscan spa. You know from my previous videos how fascinated I am by those mysterious Etruscans. I also discussed the 1.5 kilometre long tunnel found underneath the Taposiris Magna Temple in Egypt, the identification of the earliest sentence in the first alphabet engraved onto a head lice comb, a new DNA study from Upper Mesopotamia, and the Bronze Age gold belt covered in cosmological symbols that's been unearthed in the Czech Republic. Stunning Etruscan bronze statues discovered in an ancient Tuscan spa. An incredible collection of 24 bronze statues have been found inside an ancient baths complex built by the Etruscans around 2,300 years ago. They were discovered partially submerged and it's the mud and boiling water that has led to their remarkable state of preservation. The ancient baths are near San Castiano dei Bagni and sit close to a modern day spa which makes use of 42 natural hot springs. As reported by The Guardian, the find may be the most significant of its kind since two full-size Greek bronze statues of naked warriors were found in Riace in 1972. Five of the statues measure almost one metre in height. One bronze statue depicts the goddess of health, Hygieia, with a snake wrapped around her arm. Since ancient baths were often visited for health reasons, it makes sense that such a deity would have been worshipped there. Other statues include deities, mothers, children and emperors. Alongside the statues, many votive offerings were also discovered. The Etruscans built the baths complex in the 3rd century BCE and included fountains and altars before the Romans added their own elaborations later on. Thousands of coins engraved in Etruscan and Latin inscriptions were also found. These would have been thrown into the water by visitors as offerings to deities in order to bring about good health. Excavations have been ongoing at the site since 2019. Previous finds include fertility statues. These latest statues will be analysed during the winter season before excavations resume next spring. A 16th century building recently bought in the nearby town by the Courture Ministry will house the statues eventually and the site of the springs will be developed into an archaeological park. Ancient tunnel found in Taposiris Magna. A tunnel that's almost 1,500 metres in length and 2 metres in height has been found underneath the temple at the ancient Taposiris Magna archaeological site in Egypt. For over 15 years, archaeologist Kathleen Martinez from the University of San Domingo has been searching the site for the tombs of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. This latest discovery is the only tunnel to have been found in the city and is an incredible feat of engineering. Taposiris Magna was founded by Ptolemy II Philadelphus during the 3rd century BCE, around 60 kilometres west of Alexandria. Its name means Great Tomb of Osiris, which probably related to the large temple at the site. The name of the city is one of the reasons why Martinus thinks Cleopatra may be buried there. It's possible that Cleopatra would have wanted her and Mark Antony's tombs to be connected to the myth of Osiris and Isis. The tunnel is 30 metres below the temple and would have carried water to a population numbering somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 people. It's similar to the Eupalinos tunnel in Greece, which was used for the same purpose in ancient times. Within the tunnel, two alabaster heads were also found, along with coins and parts of statues. Previous excavations at Taposiris Magna have unearthed two mummies, coins with the image of Alexandra the Great and Cleopatra, beheaded statues and statues of the goddess Isis. Head lice comb discovered with engravings in the earliest alphabet. In 2017, archaeologists excavated an ivory comb from the 2nd millennium BCE Canaanite city-state of Lachish. 
However, only last year did experts notice that one of the surfaces was engraved. It's now been determined that the markings are actually an inscription written in the Canaanite script. This was the first alphabetic rather than pictorial script and derived from Proto-Sinaitic, which is thought to have emerged in ancient Egypt. I did a video on that if you're interested. As reported by The Guardian, the inscription on the comb reads, May this tusk root out the lice of the hair and the beard, which shows head lice were also problematic thousands of years ago. This is the earliest sentence in the Canaanite script to have been completely deciphered. Although worn, the 3.5 by 2.5 centimeter comb would originally have had six teeth on one side and 14 teeth on the other. Researchers analyzing the comb also found the outer membranes of head lice. Unfortunately, the comb wasn't able to be carbon dated, but it's likely that it dates back to around 1700 BCE. At that time, combs were made from various materials, including wood, bone and ivory. However, since ivory combs were made of imported material, they would have been particularly expensive. This shows that whoever owned the comb was probably wealthy, but still unable to avoid the problem of head lice still faced by humans today. New DNA study of Neolithic individuals from Mesopotamia. Upper Mesopotamia between the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers was the site of tremendous innovation during the pre-pottery Neolithic. Based on archaeological evidence such as the monument of Gobekli Tepe and domesticated crops and animals, experts have been able to construct a picture of how and where the transition from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle to fixed agricultural settlements took place. However, up until now, little was known about the ancestry and kinship of the communities who inhabited Upper Mesopotamia at that important time in prehistory. A new study published in the journal Science Advances details a genetic analysis of individuals from the pre-pottery Neolithic site of Kayanu in the Tigris Basin. 13 genomes dating to between 8500 and 7500 BCE were studied and showed that Kayanu was genetically diverse, with its inhabitants having ancestry in both the west and the east of the Fertile Crescent. It also provided evidence for immigrants having moved into the area. The researchers suggest that much of the cultural innovation that took place in the pre-pottery Neolithic was a result of these population movements. They also found evidence that Upper Mesopotamia was the source of the gene flow into Neolithic Anatolia. Bronze Age belt decorated with circular motifs found in the Czech Republic. According to Life Science, a few months ago, a beet farmer discovered a 2,500-year-old gold artifact on his land near Opava in the Czech Republic. Archaeologists at the Silesian Museum collected the object for analysis. It measures 51 centimeters in length, is decorated with concentric circles and has clasps on its ends. The archaeologists think that it used to be part of a leather belt and dates to the Bronze Age around the 14th century BCE. It's now undergoing conservation processes at the Museum Bruntau. Society in Central Europe at the time was entering new levels of complexity, with subsistence farmers living alongside the elite. International trade networks are known to have existed as well, with raw materials such as gold often being imported. Gold grave goods have been found in Bronze Age tombs, which belonged to wealthy individuals, but it's also thought that isolated hordes of gold objects were ritual deposits rather than having a connection to burials. Based on similar engravings on Bronze Age objects, experts think the concentric circles on the gold belt may be cosmological symbols centered on solar cycles. Since the belt was found on the surface of the field, it's not clear if it was part of a burial or a hoard, so further archaeological investigations will need to take place to clarify the context within which it was deposited. That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I was a little annoyed at some of the newspaper articles about the tunnel at Taposiris Magna because the headlines imply that the tunnel is connected to the tomb of Cleopatra. In fact, Cleopatra has still not been found at the site, although there is a possibility that the city could have been her resting place. The Etruscan bronzes are amazing. Just imagine what those baths would have looked like in ancient times with 
fountains, altars, and beautiful statues. It's interesting how in the ancient world, public baths were used for hygiene as well as healing. The sacred and the profane were intimately connected. Natural springs appear to have been important to people's spiritual journey as early as the Bronze Age, and I should think even further back than that. I hope you like the story about the head lice comb. Tell your friends to subscribe to me for all the fun news. Anyway, thank you for joining. Please hit the like button, drop me a comment, and I'll see you next time.